Hello, this is Chris Menard. Today I'm going to discuss the annual percentage yield known as APY. You will see that with savings accounts. You'll see that with certificates of deposit or CDs. I'm also going to show you the future value function in Microsoft Excel. I'll run through a few tips and the last thing I'll do is some what-if analysis. So let's go ahead and talk about the future value function first. I happen to notice uh, Discover now has a savings account and I'm not endorsing them or anything. I'm just pointing this out. So I'm going to talk about the annual percentage yield APY in just a second and how to calculate it. Um, I'm going to talk about the compounding. If you notice it's daily. But what they have in here is this example is they say if you invest $15,000 for a year your savings will be 255.65. Well, let's go see if that's right. But one thing that's not on the screen here is what the interest rate is. I went and looked. So the APY is 1.70, but the actual interest rate is 1.69. So let's see if we come up with this 255.65 in Excel. So I put in the 15,000. I put in the interest rate, which I went and found 1.69%. I showed you that it was compounded daily because that's important. So let's see if we can't get a future value of 15,255.65. I'm going to do equals. The future value function is equals FV. There are three required arguments rate, NPER, and PMT. The other two are optional, but I'm going to use one of the optional ones. The interest rate is 1.69, but that rate is monthly, that rate is daily, so I'm going to divide by 365, comma, NPER is the number of periods, again that's 365, which is E3, comma, PMT is are you making monthly payments or some type of payments? In this example, no. I'm putting up 15,000 bucks and I'm not putting in any more money. So I'm going to just do a comma there. How much money are you investing initially or saving, saving initially? It is $15,000, which is E1. We're done. You can do control enter. I should get 15,255.65. And I do, it's showing it as a negative, that's easy to fix. And it's technically negative E1 here because I put the money in up front and that's what I'm getting back. So there is your future value function based on an interest rate, based on a compounding period of 365 days, which is daily. So that is correct. Now, <clears throat> your, so my interest earned, if I want to do that formula is really simple. The 15,255 minus the 15,000, there it is. The reason they're showing you the APY back over here, if you're getting a savings account or a CD, you're going to see that. Here's my example of that. I'm going to pull up Nerd Wallet. Again, I'm not endorsing them or anything, but there it is. They're showing you these best savings rates for this month right now. But notice it's APY. It's not the interest rate. Here's why they show you that. If I went to three banks, Bank A, Bank B, and Bank C, and Bank A told me, their interest rate was 1.69%. Um, bank B said, well, we have 1.72. And Bank C says, well, we have 1.75. That's great. And you're most likely to say, well, I'm going to take Bank C. What they didn't tell you, so that's interest rate, is the compounding period. Let's say Bank A says we compound daily, like I just showed you with Discover. 
Bank B says we compound monthly, 12 months in a year. And Bank C says well, we only compound quarterly, four quarters in a year. So now the APY is what I need to figure out. So that's why when you open up a savings account or a CD, they're going to show you the APY and not the interest rate. So you can compare apples to apples. Now, if you want to figure out the APY, the formula for it, I have it running over here in OneNote. There's your formula. The letter R is the rate. The letter N is the number of periods. And so let's see, I'm going to figure this out in Excel, and then I'm going to show you the Excel function to do this, which is even easier. I have this on my clipboard. Let me pull this in. Clipboard. There you go. Put that right there for now. So I should get 1.70 because I'm back on the discover numbers. So it's going to be equals 1 plus the interest rate is. 1.69 divided by the number of periods, 365. And it looks like it's raised to the power of the number of periods, 365, minus 1. I should get right here 1.70. That is the APY. And I do. So that was pretty easy. Now that's the, obviously that's the formula. That's the math way to do it in Excel. But Microsoft Excel has a function that will take care of it. I'm going to do it right here because I've got the 1.69 and 365. It is the equals effect. What's your interest rate? Comma. So this function has two arguments. It wants to know what's the interest rate and then it wants to know the number of periods. 365, which is that. I should get 1.70 percentage, two decimals, I do. Just to test this, I'm going to take it out a few more decimals. I'm going to take the formula I did out a few more. Look, perfect match. Cell E6 is matching cell F10. So using that effect function, back to the APY, I can see that I actually am better off because they only if they only told me the interest rate and I had to figure out the compounding period, I would be better off with bank C in this example. Let's say bank C says, let's do this. Let's do 1.73, but they say we only are going to compound yearly. Well, that'd be the number one. So now I'm actually better off with bank C, which has a less interest rate. So that's why you always see annual percentage yield. So it is the interest rate plus it factors in the compounding period or the compounding interest. Back in Excel, let me get rid of this for a second. I'll leave this up here. I will put this Excel file on my blog post and I'll put it in the YouTube description. I'm going to leave that right there. APY. By the way, the APY is not the same as the APR. APR is annual percentage rate. You'll see that with credit cards and you'll see that with mortgages. I'm going to discuss the interest rate versus the APR later this month. Let's have a little bit of fun now. If you want to figure out this 255.65 and end up with this 15.255 in Excel doing daily to see what you get. So we got 365 days. I'm going to do day one in cell A8. I need to fill down and get to 365. Here's the easiest way to do this. Home tab, editing group, fill. I want to fill the series. I'm going down, so I'm going to select column, columns. 
I'm going in increments of one, step value one. Where do you want to stop? 365, I click OK. Down the screen it goes. If you want to see the 365, that is the selection mouse pointer. Put your mouse on the bottom of it, four large arrows. Make sure you do not get the fill handle, which is the crosshairs. So I'm right here, just double click. It'll fill down the screen, sorry. It'll select down the screen to the last cell. Go back up top. So now I'm on the top border. Double click and I'm back up top. <clears throat> Our starting value, this is going to be a 3D reference. It's going to say equals E1. So if I change this to 12,000, it changes there, but it's 15,000. Interest earned, that is going to be simply equals the 15,000 times I'm getting 1.69% annually, but it gets compounded every day. 69.45, if that doesn't show up that way, hit the comma and increase the decimal a couple times. Comma, increase decimal. I do need to make E2 and E3 in the formula absolute reference because I'm filling these down. So I clicked in between E2 and I pressed F4. I clicked in between E3 and pressed the F4 function key. And my ending value, so basically I put up $15,000 into this savings account. And at the end of day one, I'm going to have $15,000.69, which will start day two. So this is the last time I have to do this. I'm going to pull that one down once. So I am earning interest on both the money I put up, but I'm also earning interest on the interest. That is known as compounded interest. So if you notice day two, we went from 15,000 to 15,001.39. Highlight, crosshairs, bottom right corner, just double click. It'll autofill all the way down. I should end up on day 365 with 15,255.65. Let's jump down there and see. 15,255.65. Perfect. If I sum up the interest, that should be 255. It's rounded 0.65. It is. Everything is checking out here, but again, that was the future value function if you just want to flat out see it without doing everything I did. But that was a great exercise if you're an accounting student or you're just interested in how much money am I making every day. That will tell you that. One last trick. Back to this Discover Savings account. They're not running it right now, and it's not just Discover that does this, because it just ended, but they had a promotion that if you put 15000 into their savings account, you still got the 1.7 APY, but they also matched, they also just gave you 150 bucks as a bonus, and you didn't have to leave it in there for any certain amount of time, they just gave you $150 so I thought about this. So really what you're getting after one year, you're getting the 15,255 plus you're getting the $150 bonus that they gave you. So that is 15,405.65 at the end of a year. I'm going to just type this number right here for now. And so the question is, you're clearly earning more than 1.69% interest rate if after a year you really have 15,405.65. The question is, what are you earning? So I'm going to keep changing E2 to get this to go to 15,405. Watch this though. Here's what you don't want to do. I'm going to try 1.72. No, it didn't work. 1.75 didn't work. I'm going to undo a couple times. That is where we use what if analysis goal seek data tab what if analysis is right over here goal seek set cell 
That's that 15,255.65. Two value, I'm trying to get to 15,405 by 65. What is it that can change? Well, it's the interest rate I'm trying to figure out because I don't want to sit there and keep typing it. This is perfect. When I click OK, this interest rate should clearly jump up. Let's see if I hit OK and what happens. It figured it out. So really, because of that $150 bonus, I earned 2.67% interest rate. That is better than you can do on any CDs right now. CD rates today on January 9th were 2.1, 2.15, and that was for one year CD. So this is actually, if they run that promotion again, this is actually a really good deal. Undo, put it back the way it was. So we learned about the future value function. We learned what the APY is and why it's important. So no, this is the interest rate plus, plus it's the compounding periods. I showed you some Excel tips for figuring out what you make every day. And then we did some what if analysis. Uh, this video went a little long, but I think it's a really great video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'll have the APR versus the interest rate. That video will be coming up later this month. Thank you.